Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to see different types of power dissipation in CMOS circuits. So without any delay, let's get started. The total power that is dissipated can be broadly classified into two types, static and dynamic. Now let's see what is static power. Static power is the power dissipated by a transistor when it is not switching. And when the transistor is not switching, when the input at the gate of a transistor is not transitioning either from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. In that case, a transistor is in a static mode and that's why it dissipates static power. The static power dissipation is mainly in the form of leakage. That's why it is also called leakage power. Now we can have various types of leakage in a CMOS circuit. Let's look into them one by one. So what is subthreshold leakage? As the name suggests, something which happens below threshold. So let's understand this with an example. Let's take an NMOS. We know that NMOS is on when VGS is greater than VT. And when VGS drops below the threshold voltage, that is when VGS is less than VT, NMOS is supposed to be off, right? But in real transistors, the current does not abruptly cut off below threshold, but rather it drops off exponentially. Therefore, even when VGS is less than VT, for a small amount of time, there is a current that flows between drain to source, and that current is called subthreshold leakage current. Now let's move on to gate leakage. Now as the name suggests, it is the leakage that happens through gate. So basically when this gate oxide is very thin that it allows the current to pass through it, then it leads to leakage current, gate leakage current. Now let's see what is junction leakage. We know that in our CMOS transistor, there are so many PN junctions and these PN junctions form diodes and these diodes are in reverse bias. And we know that there is still a small amount of current that flows through a reverse bias diode. That small amount of current is the major cause of junction leakage. Now this was about the static power or leakage power. Now let's move on to dynamic power. Now what is dynamic power? So dynamic power is dissipated when a circuit is active. Now when a circuit is active, a circuit is said to be active when the voltage on its input net is changing due to some stimulus applied. Now it is to be noted that the change in the voltage of input net may or may not lead to change in the logic state of output. But in both the cases, whether there is change in output net or not, if there is change in the input net voltage, then dynamic power will be dissipated. Now again, dynamic power can be classified in two types, switching power and internal power. Let's look at switching power first. Now as we saw, when the voltage at input net is changing, it may or may not lead to the change in logic state of output. But let's consider the case that when the change in input is also leading to the change in output. That's when the switching power comes into the picture. So switching power is the power which is dissipated while charging or discharging the load capacitor at the output of the cell. Now let's understand this with an example. So let's say when input is changing from 1 to 0, the PMOS will turn on. And when PMOS will turn on, it will charge this output load to VDD. When PMOS is on, the energy supplied by this power supply is CVDD square. And when the PMOS is charging this capacitor to VDD, the energy stored in this capacitor is half CLVDD square. Now notice only the half of the energy which has been taken from this power supply is used to charge this, charge this capacitor. So now the question is, where did rest half of the energy go? So rest half of the energy is dissipated as heat in the PMOS transistor. And now when the input changes back to 1 from 0, the PMOS turns off and NMOS turns on and the energy which was stored in this output capacitor is discharged to 0 through NMOS. So here is the written version of whatever I explained. 
I'll give you seconds to read this. So now this is the switching power equation. So we know that a half Cl VDD square is the energy and alpha is the switching factor. So if input switches alpha times in a cycle then alpha will be switching factor. And remember that for switching power not only change in the input is important but that change in input should also lead to change in output. So if input is switching alpha times in a cycle and if that input transition is causing output transition as well then we would say that switching factor is alpha and our equation for switching power will be half alpha CLVDD square into frequency. Now as we saw the dynamic power has two components switching power and internal power. Now we will see what is internal power. Now as the name suggests internal power is the power which is dissipated internal to the cell that is which is dissipated within the boundary of a cell. It can again be divided in two parts short circuit power which we will see in a while and the power which is needed to charge or discharge the internal nodes of a transistor. So basically there will be some internal capacitance in a transistor so to charge or discharge whatever power is needed that is also comes that also comes under internal power. Now by definition short circuit power is the power which is dissipated when both PMOS and NMOS are simultaneously on during input transition. Now to understand this definition let's consider this scenario. Let's say the input is switching from VSS to VDD and we know that PMOS is on when the input is between VSS to VDD minus VT and NMOS is on when the input is from VT to VDD. So between this period that is from VT to VDD minus VT both PMOS and NMOS are on that is during this time there is a direct current flow from VDD to ground. This direct current flow from VDD to ground leads to short circuit current and which leads to short circuit power. So this was all from my side. Please let me know your feedback in the comment section below and if you think video was good don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.